Hi guys, welcome to the video and welcome to my kitchen as well. Today I'm going to be taking you through a full body strength workout that's going to improve your performance in whatever your mountain sport is, be that hiking, climbing, running, mountain biking. It's also going to decrease your chance of injury as well. And I'll tell you why in just a second. This workout is suitable for anybody from total beginners right through to people who've been training for years. I'm going to include progressions and regressions of all the exercises that I show as well. And as I said, this is going to need minimal equipment so you can do it from home. All you're going to need is a pull-up bar or a TRX suspension trainer type thing and some resistance bands. All the other things we're going to use are things that you will definitely have in your home already. So why would someone do an endurance sport like running, hill walking or cycling want to increase their strength? Well, to put it simply, if we can increase our strength, we can increase the maximum amount of force that our muscles can produce. And so when we ask them to produce a more moderate amount of force, many, many times throughout the course of a day, hundreds of times on a big mountain day, then our bodies are so much more capable of producing that force and it's a lot less demanding. Our muscles are more efficient. They can cope with the stress that we're putting on them. Now, the other huge benefit to strength training is if done right, you can increase your joint stability. Now, the word stability gets thrown around a lot, but basically what it means is the ability of your body to maintain alignment of a joint while moving through a range of motion. Now, this comes from a couple of things. Firstly is neuromuscular adaptations, so things like balance and the other is the strength of the connective tissue surrounding that muscle so the tendons and the ligaments so for people like us who participate in mountain sports where there's lots of instability there's lots of forces acting on your body from all different directions uh, you know rough trails rocks crampons all these sorts of things add instability so it's especially important for us to increase the stability of our joints so if we can increase the strength of those joints, the chance of getting an injury is much, much less. Okay, so here's the workout. A couple things to point out. Firstly, you'll notice all the exercises are compound movements, so involve several muscles. We have two leg exercises with funny names, two push exercises that will work your chest and triceps, and two pulling exercises that will work your back and biceps. Repetitions for the exercises are either 6 to 8 or 8 to 10. This means you should finish the set of repetitions in that range with good technique. If you're new to resistance training, aim to finish 3 or 4 reps away from muscular failure or loss of technique. If you're more experienced, go 2 or 3 reps away from failure. If you max out the rep range with more than 4 reps left in the tank, you need to add more resistance or use a hard progression. And if you can't hit the lower number without resorting to ugly technique, reduce resistance or regress the movement. In terms of rest periods between sets, aim for between one and two minutes. If you attack the next set too soon, your muscles won't be recovered enough and you'll fatigue much, much faster. This isn't cardio, this is strength training. We need to be able to give a maximum effort on each set. Perform two to four sets of all exercises. If you're new to training, Start with two sets of each exercise and build it up from there. The quality of movement and intensity of each rep is what is really important here. Now let's have a quick look at the leg exercises. They're both single leg movements and there's a couple reasons for this. Firstly, you'll see many programs out there involving a normal bodyweight squat, which is fine if you have the means to add enough resistance to make that exercise challenging enough uh, to complete the recommended number of reps. However, even for those who have never trained, you'll probably need a good proportion of your body weight to get the intensity we're aiming for here. And that's just not practical for many without access to a proper gym. We can instantly make things harder for ourselves by performing single leg variations. Furthermore, for mountain sports, we spend a lot of time on one leg anyway, be it running, climbing or hill walking. Single leg exercises demand balance and joint stability to be done properly. Two qualities we're trying to improve here. Right, before we start, I can't stress enough the importance of a good warm-up. Here's some key things to include and why. First, get your pulse up. This could be some light cardio for 10-20 to 20 minutes, doing some laps of your staircase or even an energetic play session with your pets or offspring. 
Next, we need to mobilize those joints. Here are a few of my favorites. The upper body, some big shoulder circles, forwards and backwards. Add a few wrist circles too. People always forget the wrists. Try drawing the biggest circles you can with your fingertips, clockwise and anti-clockwise. Some torso rotations are good as well to encourage movement in our thoracic spine. For the lower body, a few bodyweight squats are a good place to start. Play around with foot width and degree of turnout to find what's comfortable. Make sure your knees are tracking over your toes and not collapsing inwards. Next, sit on the floor with your hands behind you for support. Feet placed wider than shoulder width apart. Drop both knees towards one side and then to the other. This is encouraging internal and external rotation at the hip and feels really nice, especially if you've been sat down all day. Finally, if you have a foam roller, this could be a great tool for encouraging blood flow to the muscles pre-exercise. I'd highly recommend this if you're doing regular exercise and feeling a little stiff from your last session. A good warm-up is a great opportunity to listen to your body before an intense workout. Be aware of your energy levels or if you're feeling pain or discomfort from anywhere. Don't ignore your body's red flags. Likewise, if you're injured, ill or recovering, use your common sense. Okay, let's get into it. The first exercise is a Bulgarian split squat. This hits all the muscles in your legs, especially your quadriceps on the front of your thigh. To do this, you'll need a flat, stable surface, knee height or lower. The lower the surface, the easier the exercise. A couch, bench or sturdy coffee table work really well. Take a good step forward with one leg and place the other on the raised surface behind you. Alternatively, if you struggle with balance, you can start kneeling on the floor, place your back foot up from that position and start the exercise from here. It can take some trial and error to get the right front foot position. I'd recommend marking it with something to save faff every time you set up. You can move the front foot closer or further away. There's nothing wrong with this, but the technique here is a good place to start. The goal is to move up and down, allowing some forward movement from the front knee. Use a full range of motion if you can, letting the back knee almost touch the floor. The front leg is the one that should be doing all the work. The back leg is just for balance. Once you've found your balance, add resistance if needed to perform six to eight reps per leg with two or three reps left in the tank, then switch legs. This resistance can be in the form of a rucksack with some heavy stuff in it, such as water bottles, put it on your back or pretend you're a tourist and sling it on your front. It's up to you. If this is too easy with the weight you have available, try this, a shrimp squat. Bring your back leg up behind you and squat down as far as you can. This is an easy exercise to cheat, so go slow and maybe film yourself so you can assess your technique. Moving on, Romanian deadlifts, often abbreviated to RDL. Why the Eastern European theme? I don't know. It's just two of the best lower body exercises out there. This one's going to focus on your posterior chain, or in English, your bum and your hamstrings, or the back of your thigh. To start with, let's see what a bilateral, or two-legged, RDL looks like. <laughs> yes, we have a filming continuity error here. My apologies, I've been away from YouTube for a couple of years and I wasn't very organised with my filming in the first place. The main movement here is the hip hinge. Cue yourself to push your hip back, like trying to touch your bum to a wall behind you, maintaining a good posture, squeezing your stomach muscles and sliding an imaginary bar down your legs. Practice with a broom if you like. When done correctly, you should feel a stretch in your hamstrings when the bar gets around your knees, depending on your hamstring flexibility. When you feel it, reverse the movement, squeezing your bum cheeks together at the top. This exercise is often done in a gym with a barbell, so how do we do it with a minimal setup? Stand on one leg. This is an excellent challenge for your balance. Even if you're strong, it's worth perfecting technique with no weight. This is best done without shoes as well. Try and keep your back leg straight with your toe pointing to the floor. Cue yourself to grab the floor with your foot and drive your big toe into the floor to create a stable base. It doesn't take much weight to make this exercise hard, even for the more advanced. A big bottle of water will do the trick for most. Perform eight to 10 good reps per leg. On to the push exercises. First is the humble press up. Let's just go over the proper technique. You want your wrists 
and elbows directly under your shoulders. Squeeze your bum cheeks and keep your elbows moderately tucked into your sides as you descend down. Remember to use a full range of motion. You want your chest almost touching the floor, no half reps. We're aiming for six to eight good solid reps here. If you can't do six press-ups on the floor, that's fine. But before going to the on your knees variation, try raising your hands on a sturdy surface. The higher the surface, the more weight is taken off your upper body. For beginners, even a dining table or kitchen worktop works really well. The important thing is to use a variation that allows controlled quality movement. This will help you make progress much faster than going for a harder movement before you're ready. If you do need to make press-ups harder, there's loads of crazy variations out there, but one of my favorites is super simple, slow it down. In the eccentric part of the movement, towards the floor, count to three or four, and proper one Mississippi, two Mississippi ones, please. Then do an explosive one second concentric or upwards, and now see how many you can crank out. Need to make them harder again? Increase the range of motion. Yoga blocks or a stack of tasteful outdoorsy coffee table books does the job nicely. This is a good way to actively improve your shoulder mobility too. For our next exercise, we're going to mimic an overhead pressing movement. For this, I've got two different exercises, one for beginners, the banded overhead press, and one for intermediate and advanced trainees, the pike press up. If when doing the standard press up on the floor, you couldn't do six solid reps, do the overhead press. To do this, take a band and stand on one strand of it. Stretch the band up to your shoulders with hands just outside shoulder width. The band will sit on the outside of your forearms. Your elbows should be in front of you, pointing downwards. Press overhead, shrugging your shoulders up at the top. Aim for six to eight reps, but if you're limited with the thickness of the band you have, you can do as high as 15 in order to suitably fatigue the muscles. For those who can do full floor press-ups, we will use the pike press-up as it allows more overloading of the shoulder muscles. Start as you would for a normal press-up, then walk your feet towards your hands, raising your hips into the air and balancing on your tiptoes. The closer to your hands you walk your feet, the harder it is as you place more load on your shoulders and demand more hamstring flexibility. Lower down so your head is in front of your hands and then press back up to reverse the movement keeping your chest at the same angle throughout. This is another good one to record yourself to check your technique. Okay, on to our pulling movements. And the first option is pull-ups. If you can do six to eight solid reps, then go ahead and do that. If you can do more, add a bit of resistance in the form of adding weight to your body or slowing down the lowering portion of the movement. If you can't do at least six pull-ups, don't worry, you will be able to in time. But for now, it can be a bit tricky to make the pull-up movement itself easier at home. So we're gonna use a different exercise. This is the horizontal row, and for this you'll need a TRX type system, or here I've got some gymnastic rings. For these, the more upright your body, the easier the exercise will be, and the more horizontal your body, the harder they'll be. Whichever difficulty you use, make sure to maintain a straight line from your feet to your shoulders. At the top of each rep, make sure to squeeze your shoulder blades together. The second pulling exercise is a face pull, and for this you'll need a light resistance band and something sturdy to attach it to. Attach the band at around forehead level and take a few steps back to put some tension on the band. The easiest way of doing this is to use one strand of the band, but you can use both strands uh, if you want to make it a bit more challenging. You're going to pull the band back and up to your forehead. You want to keep your elbows slightly higher than your shoulders and make sure that your hands come back as well. You should feel a strong contraction in your upper back muscles. Like with the last exercise, really think about squeezing your shoulder blades together to make sure you're using your back and not just your biceps. Aim for between 8 and 10 reps, but I do understand it can be difficult resistance band to make measured steps in progression, so you can go a bit higher if you need to, between 12 and 15 reps at maximum. So that's the workout. I'd recommend doing it two or three times a week and every session increase the difficulty a little bit, either by doing a couple more reps or by using more weight or using a harder exercise variation. 
Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you found this useful. Feel free to ask me any questions you have about the workout or the exercises or training in general. Happy training. I'll see you in the next video.